assuming your Office 365 data is automatically backed up can feel a lot like this. Backing up Office 365 data with Veeam feels like this. So back it up with Veeam. So that was all I had for our short video. I'd like to welcome. So is, how exactly do you pronounce your name? I'm so terrible names uh, no, no worries uh, my name is Vesa Lopanen and uh, but most people call me Vesku so <clears throat> I just start sharing my screen and let I can just, see your screen yeah just a moment I will redo it and do, forgot to do some little trick there which is the <laughs> standout mode of course I love this new feature <clears throat> yeah just have to remember to the, turn it on. OK, <laughs> this was not about Teams tips and tricks, but uh, the standout mode, mode is new and it's in here. But um, OK, I guess I will just start uh, start my session then. And yeah, thank you, everyone. Welcome to my session. And, and let's have some Chicago here and on the whiteboard, uh, uh, of course. But uh, yeah, my topic today is all about the whiteboarding and combined with Microsoft Teams. So this hopefully will give you some ideas and a new tips and tricks how you can use Microsoft Whiteboard to kind of the ideate and collaborate together with the others. And since this was the test of Chicago, yeah, of course I have the pizza, uh, deep, uh, deep dish pizza in there. And before going on to the actual session, of course we have a few slides here of course, a small reminder about supporting each other. It's a Pride Month. Microsoft is uh, highlighting that very well. And if you are into uh, raffles and giveaways, of course, there's uh, uh, the sponsor boots and you will get some secret words to present. You will be able to win some Amazon gift, uh, gift cards. And going through the sponsorship and uh, all the important messages is, of course, that uh, please join the supporting the Chicago Public Schools uh, through Children First Fund. There's a link, there's a QR code, and children are important. And one more ad, of course, uh, we just had a VM ad uh, running or video running, but a massive thanks to every sponsor because uh, you are needed to make uh, to be able to uh, create these events and uh, so people can join and learn. And finally, uh, so big thanks to our sponsors there. Finally, uh, as I was already saying, my name is Vesa uh, Most of the people call me Vesku. The principal consultant for modern work at Sulava uh, from Finland. And where is Finland? Of course, uh, it's slightly far away compared to Chicago. So that I just had to put some map here. Uh, Chicago being here and uh, Turku, Finland being there. So. It was a long virtual flight and it's actually 9 p.m. Uh, here for me to, today on Friday. This is the best way to spend a Friday uh, Friday evening, of course, but uh, for you it's kind of something like midday, I suppose. And I'm an Office of and Services MVP, so please look me up on Twitter and LinkedIn and go ahead and check out my blog, myteamsday.com. So post that on Twitter uh, the link that has all my whiteboarding articles in my blog. There are lots of Teams articles, as, as the name says, but also uh, Power Automate, Power Platform, etc. found there. I'm one of the organizers in Teams Nation and also the founder slash organizer in Teams Finland. So I have been around uh, several events. This actually makes my 26th uh, community event this year. So it's a kind of last event before uh, I go to the summer break on this community talks. All right, so I guess we could more or less start the session. And uh, yeah, as you saw already, you are I'm using the whiteboard to show off uh, these slides because uh, I think it's sometimes a cool way to use a different approach 
uh, for this kind of a um, presentation. So you don't always have the traditional PowerPoints and a new uh, or, or some, some other feature. But uh, instead, when you're using the using this uh, uh, whiteboard or for already, I could start, for example, doing some uh, fun stuff about this uh, trip coming from all the way from Finland to Chicago uh, to talk here or just use this to annotate uh, or emphasize on some of the information. And uh, since I promised some Teams contact, of course, it's running inside the Teams meeting. And as for tips and tricks on Teams, in case you want to do something like this, you want to have the focus and full screen mode on uh, when you are doing the presentation. So that's when you can really uh, get the maximized area. It's not 100% area, uh, so it's not going to be like PowerPoint show, but it's getting closer to that. Of course, the tools out there are uh, very handily visible all the time. The thing is that, okay, you don't get to the next slide that easily, but uh, you can, of course, uh, make the presentation more engaging with some doodling around or whatever, however you want to uh, add that. And as I'm going to preach or tell that, that this slide is more about a bit of summary before going into uh, actual tips and tricks and how you used to be using the whiteboard. And some advices uh, in here like the preparing the whiteboard in advance. I did that so I can have this kind of presentation for you. And it really helps when you are creating a Teams meeting and since every Teams meeting comes with the whiteboard, is that you go ahead there, you open the whiteboard tab, or if it doesn't work for some reason, there are some nice hiccups, you may have to open it twice, or you just join the meeting and share the whiteboard from there. So and that's when you, uh, okay, okay, I can show you how to share, you just hit the share content and you can choose the whiteboard from there. And, and that's uh, when you kind of, uh, get started with the whiteboard related to that meeting. Later this year uh, in August, uh, there, there's going to be some upgrades to whiteboard and that's when you can uh, select an, an existing whiteboard. So you don't have to always have a new one to every meeting because you can't copy this from meeting to meeting. It's, it's a bit of painful to kind of recreate this for each meeting if you have the same topic. So think smartly, smartly there when you are using what in that sense. But for Teams meeting, for collaboration, ideation process, that's not a usual the issue. There's a whiteboard included in every meeting. Share it, start using that or filling it up. Because one of the things, if you just think about the ideation process or collaboration, if you just have the blank whiteboard, it doesn't give any ideas to anybody. You have to start filling. Either you have a good plan when you start filling it when you talk, and then start in the, in the, uh, uh, interacting with people. Or um, the other alternative is that you put there something that people can grab on and have some ideas and they can react. Because when you are using the whiteboard, you can use this to engage and activate your attendees. This session is more like a lecture because we don't have any interaction at the moment. I did one session with uh, Louis Reed on Teams Nation. And, and we, we kind of had it an interactive uh, whiteboard there and we invited everybody uh, from the audience to join in. And, and that's excellent when you just want to have that kind of fast paced free form system. But in, in this one, when I'm kind of uh, showing you how you can do things, the interactivity can be a bit tough in there. But you are of course welcome to use the chat and uh, post me some questions or use raise hand and Let's see if we can get your mic, to open, mic open. And the a point, when you are at the me business meeting or meeting with your partner or just uh, meeting with your team, you want to have an engaging, captivating meeting instead of one-way meeting. So, so in order to activate your audience, transform that meeting uh, to the session instead of just kind of a, a one-way stream. Uh, so when you're using the whiteboard, you can have everybody can have the voice. Everybody can, but even uh, you can encourage people to doodle around, do something in there, so they can kind of uh, keep be active. If they are doing something with their mouse in there or writing post-its, they are doing something. 
they are not drifting away. If you are just speaking, and uh, if the uh, kind of the topic is not that interesting, people will multitask, and they are not there. They drift away. So that's why transforming it to interactive teamwork session is really important. But also, in a, in a matter of inclusivity, everybody can have a voice with the, via the whiteboard. I don't know you, but uh, sometimes it's a bit awkward to start talking in the meeting, especially if you have a, a large crowd there. You may not want to kind of raise your hand or even voice or even perhaps a chat. But uh, with whiteboard, it's going to be less intrusive, so you can perhaps vote on something or just post it, post your notes there, and you can be a bit more invisible if you like, but you can put your input there, so you can have the voice. Perhaps it's just about voting, it's about something, and, and uh, you can bring that in. The larger the team or, or the meeting, uh, the more you need to notice that, okay, there are people that won't be opening their mic or pushing out their opinion, but they still have valuable opinions. And when you're using the whiteboard, you are very easily following the intelligent meeting lifecycle. So you have the pre-meeting phase when you are preparing the whiteboard or even other people may be preparing that one. You have the during the active phase when people are putting their ideas, you are working together uh, in there. And then on the post-meeting activities, you may want to continue work from there, or you get the ideas and, and then uh, create some solid documents out of that. But it's good to understand the whiteboard, even when it's in Teams meeting. It is not limited to the Teams meeting. So as Teams meeting, it doesn't have a kind of end time and start and end time, but instead you can reuse that. You can go to the whiteboard application or web version and continue working on that whiteboard that was used during the meeting. Okay, I think I got some uh, something started out here, so that was the warm up uh, again. But um, as you already saw, I was doing stuff uh, to this uh, PowerPoint slide. I had taken a picture, uh, copied one slide here, and I can highlight things from there and I can kind of uh, place it on the background so it's it's part of the canvas. So we can draw it on that and we can put some remarks there or perhaps we want to write some text in there. So we just right click here and we can put some text. I'm, oh, that's not a good moment when you are uh, having some issues with the Zoom or whiteboard. Interesting. Uh, I wish I could have used Teams meeting a bit longer, but um, if something like that happens, then it's good to know that you can always reshare the content. The whiteboard is there. Uh, uh, some accidental zooms, well, it's not fun uh, when that happens. Okay, so we were writing a text. So I put some text there and uh, it's in black and I have a blackboard here, so let's uh, make it yellowish or orange and put some uh, remarks. Uh, and nothing seems to be uh, starting that well. Remarks here. Okay, now it works. So I can have some text there. And that's important because most of the people are not using inking. They don't have that screen device or they don't have that school good inking skills. I'm one of the examples there. My inking, it's just like that. It's, it's not pretty, especially if I'm using mouse. And uh, so that's why it's important to know that you can add notes and you can add text. So I can type here some uh, notes and I can change the note color. Perhaps it, uh, you have agreed on some specific color, so you just want to use a different color there. Perhaps it means about the importance or uh, perhaps it's just about who is doing that or which team member is doing that. Is it, is it about the visual parts or is it about the code parts? You can all agree on those or it can be just a visual effect. So you can start going and, and typing in your information. So you don't have to ink, you can write. And the other people can go ahead and uh, type as well uh, more information. So we can go and type that info and let's use that one. So that's a nice team score. 
and, and you can start regrouping the info. And we are still inside the Teams meeting. As you saw, there, these pens, uh, you can use inking, and you can now choose different sizes. This is quite new. And, and then you can highlight something, or perhaps you want to uh, undo that, and click on the pen again, and then highlight it. So it's possible to use these pens uh, to your needs. And there's also the highlighter. You can choose the highlighting color and uh, then just highlight some text. OK, now if I would uh, move the picture in the behind, uh, from the behind, these remarks are not attached to that picture. So that's the only uh, bad thing here. So you have to have some static elements before you st uh, start working on this. So, and thinking about regrouping some information, the post-it notes are great, but if you have some uh, inking attached to them, it's not always that a uh, good idea to move them around. So pay attention how you do this. So we have a few things. We have the text and notes here as well on the top bar in Teams. And this Teams whiteboard is the same one as in the web version. So web version, Teams version, Android version, they are all the same. And finally, we have these kind of shapes here. So we can start using and uh, using that to our advantage and start uh, putting some colors. Okay, it doesn't have that many colors available uh, at the moment. Interesting. Okay, there. I was just misclicking that, and I can have different shapes from that, and also you can use it to add something else here. Yeah, these are all pretty cool. Uh, and it's going to make it really easy to add arrows to the text. So we want to add a pointer there. We just click it, and then we can uh, resize it and re move it and hit the color once more. Is it intuitive? Not always, but uh, once you get use it a bit more, it's going to be much more uh, usable. And so we have lots of information. Everybody's using Teams meeting there. And, and, and we are happy. Where this data is stored? Well, it's, it, it is stored inside Azure. And since it is stored inside Azure uh, somewhere, uh, we can't get to the whiteboard file. Not yet. We can get to that in September when it will move to be at the SharePoint Online. That's when we get the file. And, and when the file is going to be in SharePoint Online, this is a bit of assumption, but uh, I think it's like a stream recordings. We are moved from stream and slash Azure into SharePoint. And after that, we have things like version control, compliance, metadata, and everything else related to that. But right now, uh, the whiteboard is only exists in that moment. It doesn't have version history more than the undo redo buttons and it doesn't have a backup or anything like that so if somebody goes and delete wipes out everything on the board it's gone so that is why it is really important to know that even from teams meeting you want to export the image so we want to export uh, that whiteboard to be a file after our ideation session and we can upload that file to Teams. It will go to our downloads. It takes a few moments there because it was a larger one, but it's downloaded and then it's a BNG and we can do something about that. Put that to SharePoint and to compliance. We have something so we don't lose the information. That's one of the key things. Always remember to export, just like when you are being working on real whiteboard. Uh, if somebody, if you don't, save it so you don't take a photo or you don't take it with you somebody is going to take it away and throw, throw it to trash send you have to be in a hurry so you can retrieve it before it gets recycled fully so that's uh something to know and of course when we are using the teams version we don't really have a vote button here but uh, that's uh, when I suggest using either post-it notes or you can use some uh, doodling around to represent votes, and that's how you can at least visually see. Okay, that's more. A, that's one of the backlog items we are going to be working now, and 
that has got the most votes. It's not very controlled, but it's going to be a, a process together with your team. So it's it's going to be everybody's opinion in. And that voting part, that's really simple to get people uh, working that. OK, I have, uh, I didn't have the chat yet open, but now the whiteboarding team is very short on features compared to the app, and the app is not available on the Mac. There is an applica whiteboard application available on the Mac, I recall. But, um, and can I use the app in my Teams meeting instead of the web version in the whiteboard? You are going to get answer to that right in the moment. Uh, can another, uh, attendees annotate on these as well? Um, or do we need to use the web version? And everybody who is in the meeting can use that as long as they are in the same organization as you. And that is going to change in September uh, when external attendees can work on the whiteboard as well. But right now it's limited to your organization. Or alternatively, uh, everybody has to use Microsoft account and that then it's not inside Teams meeting in there. And if I add content to the whiteboard in a Teams meeting, will that save? Yes, uh, it saves all the time. I don't have to save it, it's constantly saving. And how did I bring your slide on the whiteboard? I don't see that option. No, you don't see that option because I didn't do it inside Teams meeting. I did it using the whiteboard application. So yeah, I'm going to go there. I didn't plan on spending the whole 45 minutes in that Teams whiteboard, but I wanted to show you that there are options in Teams whiteboard and it is getting more options in August. There's going to be a laser pointer, there's going to be stickers, there's going to be the ability to add the images uh, and, and files uh, in August to this uh, web whiteboard, which is Teams whiteboard. And it looks like the older development part is right now going to this web version, so slash Teams version. OK, uh, so we are in a Teams meeting. This person is not the organizer. Organizer would have the option to lock the whiteboard from the others, so the organizer is the only one editing it. But I wanted to show that part. And now for the next one. Uh, how about if we jump uh, and, and check out the whiteboard application? And I have it right here. So this is the whiteboard application I'm running on my desktop. And I had a bit more zoom in here. And you are already seeing some fun stuff. <laughs> so I didn't save, I didn't do anything. It keeps on updating. And we saw that Amy there is one of the attendees, and she's been, she was the one I was account I was using when I was editing that inside Teams meeting. So I can participate inside Teams meeting using the whiteboard application. I can add a note, uh, hello from the app. And if I go ahead and uh, go to my Teams meeting, I can already see that. And it's now actually showing that I am editing that. And that's the feature that's supposed to come during August. So that's brand new. You can, you can say that uh, because it was so fun. I'm going to uh, try it again just to see if it was a click, glitch or not. And we do the hello and we are seeing my picture. So it's going to uh, starting to show who's editing what so you can actually see that. And I learned something new. All right, so we are uh, now using the whiteboard application. You can see it's slightly different. I have the toolbar here on the bottom instead of uh, on the top. And and I can go ahead and try to uh, select some parts here. But what is the most important thing is that if you are using those shapes I was using inside Teams version or as web version, these don't work with the whiteboard application. And that's a really interesting step by the Microsoft. So if I go to back to this uh, Teams version, you can see here's an arrow, here's the circle, here's the diamond. And coming back here, I, ca I can't see those. I can move them, <laughs> but uh, and I can delete them, but I don't see what's the content. And that there and there are skills in this whiteboard applications that are not visible uh, inside the Teams version. So when you are working with both of these, 
you have to pay some attention. Who is using the what? So and and stay away from those even cool features if if you know it's going to cause uh, issues and troubles. Okay, now we are at the whiteboard application and we can start having a bit more a uh, bit more fun. We are going to be seeing more options here. And first of all, the toolbar is here now in the bottom, and uh, so, so we can use that, or we can go to the settings menu from the right, and we can choose the toolbar location to left, for example. Now we can say it's in here. So and you have the right version available as well. So customize it to your needs, where whatever is most and natural for you. And then there were some other features here. We can take a look like active pen is my pen all the time active. So when I'm draw, use my mouse, I can draw all the time, ink all the time, inking to shape. I will show that a bit later, like in the table object snapping. So uh, it's it has a grid behind there. Yeah. So it will position and make it a bit more uh, better looking that. And we can export the file as a high quality SVG or PNG here. And we can post to Teams, sending the email summary, formatting the background. And yeah, we don't, we stay away from the clear canvas. So let's format the background. So we can have the whiteboard, we can have the yellow board, Teams board, or, or the blackboard. And you can have the change the uh, grid as well. So the settings are there. That's good to know. And there's also this privacy and security setting like uh, allowing a few things. You have to have this enable optional connected experiences like importing a PowerPoint into the presentation, for example. But before importing PowerPoint, uh, let's show a few things like uh, permissions. I have Amy here. And now my account is the one who created the meeting and I own this whiteboard. So I can have on the three dots, I can remove her from here or with the pen, I can make her read only. This is also about the organization level, but you can create a board with only few people have editing capabilities or you lock it before you really start working on that. And then when you allow people to tend to change things, well, then you allow it. Or, or you have that open during the meeting and then you start removing the permissions to make it read only. So not everybody can just uh, go ahead and do and edit things. It's a good thing to know. It's not very prominent there uh, from the roster list. And of course, you can invite people uh, with that or you can just uh, create a share, sharing link or post into link to Teams. <clears throat> Okay, and some things, uh, things that's good to know is the right clicking in this application. So you have a lots of features uh, under the right click, like well, copying, adding the image. What does it mean? Well, it means I can get an image directly from my hard drive. I can start writing a post-it note directly uh, or a new text directly from uh, without having gone to the toolbar. That's really, really. Uh, productive action. And yeah, I can add a PDF pages, but there's the more menu. So from here, you can also add a Word document, adding a PowerPoint, take a picture from camera or do ping me with search. Formatting the background is also available or inserting the list. So uh, these all preview features are the ones that won't be working in the Teams meeting. So that's good thing to know. You have the uh, undo and redo uh, in the menu, and here is the insert menu, which is almost the same as we had from the right click. So do you really need that menu? Um, that's a good question. But uh, undo and redo are there, and uh, Control z works as well. Okay, uh, and if you are thinking about what's the benefits of this whiteboard, well, I can vote on things. I can vote on that picture and I can vote on that one, for example, and, and what I can give thumbs up. And going back to Teams meeting and, and scrolling there, we can see the votes, but we just can't do those votes 
uh, from Teams meeting as we would like to. Okay, I have some pictures. This is the part. And when you think about the ideas process, you may have some post-it notes here, you may have some uh, ideas, you have some uh, trinkets of information, and, and some of them might be in different color. Uh, let's go there and change it to green. And, and then you can start grouping things together, just like on the real whiteboard. So, so perhaps these are somehow related, and perhaps this idea about that uh, image is also related there, but these are about uh, about the modern work for some uh, in some way, and that one is just about uh, break or recreation. How about adding a picture of pitch? Okay, let's do that. We can go to image menu and we could upload an image, or we can search from Bing. So let's put a Chicago, uh, Chicago food there and use the Bing search to have some ideas. Uh, okay, that, that looks good, but that's not pizza. Uh, is it there? No, we just search for again and put um, Chicago pizza, Chicago pizza there, and we should have. Uh, that looks very deep dish. Okay, we have some couple of images we just add there, or we can use copy paste. I can take a, a screen capture of something. Okay, my image was so horrible. Okay, at, uh, from my other screen that I had to retake it and I can paste it. And now when I have pasted the image, I can put it here and uh, so we can move it around and we can resize it and we can twist it. So it's going to be visual. And the, the idea about the whiteboard is also make it a visual. Don't try to make it like a word document. As even as I like to say about collaboration, this is not a text editing tool. You are not creating a document with the whiteboard. You are bringing in ideas. You are bringing in comments about those documents and, and bring them here uh, together. As, and, and because you can move them around, have some idea, have some doodling, you can choose a picture, okay, this is a good one. Uh, we can work from here. We just lock it to the background so we don't accidentally move it around and we can start in, uh, doing some inking. And as you can see, there are a few more options for colors and uh, pens here. If you, uh, if you like tanning the Teams version so we can have uh, something to do uh, with this. And we can also use, if you want straight lines, uh, the ruler and use the mouse wheel on top of the ruler to change the angle, for example, and we just uh, draw it so we get a nice straight line if we want. And then we can turn it off. And if you just thought that something is uh, a bit uh, off the area, then we can just select that part and yeah, we can delete it. Or perhaps this was in the wrong place and we just need to highlight that person in the behind. So you can move things, you can ink on them and um, have some fun in there too, if you want. Uh, but there's more, there's always something more. There's always something uh, you want to bring into whiteboard. One of the things that's uh, there is the ink beautification. There's a, there's a magic wand. We want to be wizards or whiteboard. Azure is the wizard, but uh, we select the object and we just hit the magic wand and it will do something. In this case, it's trying to figure out what has been drawn in the picture. If you have taken a uh, email kind of a picture of the whiteboard of real whiteboard or the uh, pen and uh, the paper whiteboard, you might want to paste that image here and, uh, and make it part of this virtual whiteboard. And I really like the virtual version better than having that Teams meeting where you have one camera or somebody's mobile camera or laptop camera showing what's happening in the whiteboard when people are working there. You don't really get the same experience uh, as a collaboration participant as somebody uh, or who should be one of the team working on the whiteboard. It's uh, it's nice that they noticed that, but it's not really the hybrid work. 
situation we are looking forward to. That's the old world, and we are not going to go back to that. If you have a Teams rooms device, yes, you have the content camera, you can uh, have the better view of that whiteboard, but it's still something you can't interact. But instead, if they start bringing the information to this virtual version, everybody can interact, even in the same room or online. And that's one of the really big reasons I like this, because I work a lot from home. So I have these as objects, and somebody may not be that visible or good, but then we can use thinking to highlight them better. Or perhaps we just want to move uh, parts of that uh, somewhere else. But a magic wand has other uses. Like, this is my handwriting when I'm using the mouse. Yeah, I know, it's not good. Uh, my handwriting using the pen, it's not much better. But uh, I can go ahead and hit the magic wand. And the, the AI tries to go through uh, what I have been trying to say there, or what kind of letters I have there, and it will beautify that. That's really cool. And the AI has other uses, like uh, inking to shape. I really enjoy this one because it's, uh, we don't want to do a black pen on the wire, a wire blackboard. Let's do the white one. And we can start uh, drawing some shapes. Yeah, it's going to figure out uh, what we were trying to do and beautify it automatically. So even I uh, can do some uh, decent uh, kind of uh, figures here. It's not perfect because um, if, if I leave one corner open, it may not realize that, just have to, or, or do something like that. But it works actually pretty good, pretty well. And something to note, if I zoom in, hey, did you know this? I can really zoom in. And I can see it's not trying to make it perfect one. It's going to make it look like the human did it. So it leaves some imperfection there. If it would be exactly the straight lines, it wouldn't look that good. And now that we are drawing something, uh, we have the unlimited canvas. We can go here, uh, go to one side, and we just go ahead and uh, draw some more there. So we have some image that it didn't figure out. Uh, and, and then we can just move forward. So we have the really the unlimited whiteboard canvas. We don't have limits there. Uh, yes, we have zoom out limit. So what I usually recommend very often is that uh, work around that 100%, because then you have more zoom, room to zoom out, and you have lots of the room to zoom in. Okay, then we can also ink the table. The, uh, this is really fun if you are entering information. So let's uh, do a square. Okay, it's not square. Uh, Let's just uh, take it back, and we have almost a square. Then we just start uh, drawing these lines. Okay, it's, uh, uh, it should be a bit more straight than what I do. And uh, now, so we have some, uh, some columns and rows there, but we can also move them around in here. And that's actually uh, pretty fun. When you start, uh, because you can start inking uh, to these elements here. Let's put here that, and we can put that. And we should have uh, played this game there. And as you can see, it will resize because it understands the inking part. I, I, I really enjoy ink to shape uh, shape that table because it's going to be very, very usable uh, in this. Some of the few things uh, I still want to show, I promised to show the adding of the PowerPoint uh, and the content. So if I, for that, I will just jump to the virtual machine and, and show it from there because I have those demo uh, PowerPoints there. And from there, I don't want to use the Teams meeting, obviously, because this works inside the whiteboard. And I have the whiteboard there as well. And as you see, Everything has been updated. So let's go ahead and add a Word document. So I can choose it from my files to upload, and I can choose uh, which pages I upload. And it's there. It is as an image. And that's ha that happens to PowerPoint as well. I can go ahead and choose. I have a Chicago, 
Chicago presentation there, and I would go ahead, for example, and choose my ending slides. I'm not going to go in that yet, and I can then move them around. And that's the easiest way. The other way is to use the copy paste. So you take a picture of your slides in the presentation mode, for example, and paste them to the whiteboard. Now that these are here, they are in the Teams meeting uh, as well. And a few other things that are available are the templates and lists, the note grids. Note grid is just a grid of notes, so you can really easily add more notes there. So they are already organized uh, in there. And if you are doing a list, you have just a list of uh, different tasks or, or something else. And follow up list has also the person, but it's assigned to a person, but it's not uh, anywhere yet. I can choose one of the editors here who is responsible of that uh, particular task. And finally, I want to highlight the template. So there are a few different templates, uh, for example, for retrospective or effective meetings, what analysis, project planning, let's choose that. And it's just going to bring in a very good looking uh, information, kind of uh, something you can use. And none of these preview features work in Teams meetings. So then you have a choice. Uh, when you're starting to think about using the whiteboard meet, uh, with your teamwork, is that do you everybody is everybody using the whiteboard application? If they are, you can use these features. It is not connected to the Teams meeting as that, as that, but it doesn't really matter. You can set the screen to show uh, the others what's happening, and that works with externals, of course. If you are seeing my whiteboard and we are not in the same organization because I'm sharing my screen. And finally, of course, I could post it to uh, Teams. OK, let's add uh, that's the wrong team. I just use the Teams Nation and let's put it to training team. And it will copy a link to this whiteboard in the team. OK, that's posted. Or I can export that image or I can send an email a summary. And it will send it to Amy and, and from me to, kind of, to have this kind of information. OK, what's what has happened in the board? What's what's included? And it includes these objectives and risks what they are from there. So you have some text format. And I could just send the email. Final thing, of course, I was talking about you can use these with uh, externals, but there's one exception. So when we are now in the, inside the uh, virtual machine, I have a uh, Teams uh, uh, team there, and I have a team where I have invited guests. And I have this uh, whiteboard here. Let's do some changes there so you can see it's live. And uh, Amy is from inside organization, but Adele is not. So Adele can go ahead and say hello uh, from a guest. And how do I know she's not uh, in the member of the organization because, well, she's a guest in there. So she can work on this whiteboard that has been added to the channel. And how do you do that? Well, we saw the hello from the guest. You just add a channel tab and you can search for whiteboard and you add a whiteboard. The drawback, it's adding a new one. So not perfect. It's always a new whiteboard when you add it like that, at least in this point. But you have a whiteboard you can use with your team members, even when they are not uh, in your organization. And it only works inside from a channel. So they can't open this in an application or they can't open that in a web uh, because it's saying they don't have a permission. But while they are using it inside Teams, it, it can be a web version of Teams or desktop teams, it works. OK, then I think I'm just going to show you the few takeaways before I wrap up. Uh, I already mentioned these points, but it's only inside the organization, um, but the changes roadmap for September. It was original roadmap for March, so that, that's, that's a bit sad, but it happened. 
So, uh, but if you use the Microsoft account, then you can share it to other people because Microsoft account or Microsoft consumer account is one organization, so to say. But they have everybody would have to log into the whiteboard application with their personal Microsoft account, and it's it would not be in your tenant. You could export the result, and of course, it would wipe the board, board away. But you can do that as a workaround. It's not fun. It requires requires people to uh, really to uh, change the account and re-login, and they don't want to do that and unless they really, really need that whiteboard. Work together with guests in a channel. This is the easy uh, workaround I just shown. And as a reminder, always export your whiteboard results. You want them to be safe. So that's, I think, that's a bit like wiki in Teams. So, so it lives in a moment, but the whiteboard is meant to have a shorter lifespan than a wiki. So that's why it's more understandable and, and it works with Surface Hub too. So it's a really cool, cool thing, but always save the result. And pay attention to the version. I tried to show you that some things work there and some things don't. And, and that requires a bit of playbook or at least agreement what you are doing and, and what you are, uh, what kind of features you are using. And always be creative. Whiteboard is not a formal tool. It's about ideas and bringing in people uh, just like a physical whiteboard. There's no difference in that. It's an app, but uh, it doesn't force you some constraints. So, so try to be creative, let people do the around so they stay active. And finally, as a reminder, uh, as checked on the roadmap, I think it was updated uh, in less than a week ago, is that these new features like laser pointer locking the view. So every attendee must see what the presenter is showing. Live cursor, who is editing, we already saw that part uh, in there. Adding docs and images and, and, uh, and those stickers are coming in August. And Something and what is coming also is the ability to sh uh, share an existing whiteboard. So you could have a, one whiteboard you reuse in different meetings. Thank you everyone uh, for joining the session. And uh, it was a pleasure to be able to talk to you about whiteboard again. Please do give me feedback. I think the link is incorrect unless they have fixed that, but the QR code should work and take you to the right way. Uh, uh, form. I will be. I don't have any sessions planned for the autumn side except the European Collaboration Summit, but uh, I will be adding a few ones because this was the last uh, community event I'm speaking until the sum, uh, summer break. I still, I still have a few webinars from co company side, but uh, uh, as for that, for after a very long time, my speaking calendar is kind of empty and. So it's kind of a very good moment to leave to vacation when you don't know what's going to happen in the autumn part. And well, I have the, this is 26th community event I am. So let me just check the chat. I open it one, and I hope you enjoyed this session. And uh, about my speakings uh, in the autumn side, go ahead and check my blog schedule. Uh, there's a page for that, and it's on the link there as well. And uh, yeah, you will see where I will be speaking next. And of course, check out the blog as well, because you will find a lot of information also about Whiteboard. But thank you, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this and, and you had some fun. And uh, let me know in chat if you learned something as well. So, so uh, that's my goal always, trying to find something that you, you will learn. <laughs> the, the pizza is getting people to dining tonight. Yeah, <laughs> and luckily I, I ate before I did this session. It was <laughs> drooling uh, to do those uh, eight art those speech pictures there. Yeah, oh, that is tough, tough, <laughs> so tough. Yeah, I'm thankful that you we're going to be able to let, uh, but in the fall external users utilize the whiteboard. I think that's exciting. 
that's that's really exciting and it's going to open a lot of possibilities. I really, really enjoy that part because now it's we have a lot of collaboration, we have lots of meetings with external people. And thinking about features like shared channels that's coming November to Teams, we know we are going to be doing that even more and even more easier with the external. So September, I really hope that schedule keeps because it's going to change a lot of this. I agree. So, I'm very excited. Yes, me as well. Okay. So thank you, everyone. It was fun. It's almost 10 p.m. here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and a Friday pass. evening. Yes. <laughs> okay, but hey. Um, uh, but any any other questions? I guess uh, do we have the next speaker already there or? Not coming up very shortly. But no, I don't no. see any other questions just yet. Yeah, I'm just hanging, talking with you for a half a minute if somebody <laughs> has, has, has something, so uh, they get their questions answered. And. Um, but uh, so, did you learn anything, Stacey? Me, I, absolutely. I had I know somewhat about that that external piece was coming in, but I had I did not know about the timing. Um, I didn't know what's going to happen this year or next year. I just I can't wait. That's the piece that sunk in the the biggest for me. Yeah, and and the I guess the second one is the ability to share the existing whiteboard to the meeting. Uh -huh. That's really, really important. That's coming in August on the roadmap. So, so that, so that's really something that I'm looking forward. But hey, thank you, everyone. So much. Have some conference. <laughs> I will be doing shutdown for the weekend <laughs> now, but, but I hope everybody is enjoying the event. Fantastic! Thank you. Thank you.